Welcome to episode 48 of Realty Talk. Um, I am solo this week um, just because of some scheduling uh, conflicts and everything. I'm doing this solo uh, without Ellie. I was going to try to grab um, another um, agent, potentially newer agent, um, but that didn't happen, which is totally fine. Things happen. Um, so next week we'll probably be back to our um, regular telecast, I don't know, regular audio, whatever we call this with Ellie. Um, but I still wanted to put one out. Again, I talk a lot about consistency, so I want to make sure that I'm consistent, and our goal is to put out 52 of these this year. Um, I think right now, by doing this, we are on track, which is good, and um, hopefully that brings you guys some value over the next uh, year of 2020. So the topic I wanted to go over today, and I've talked about this a lot over the last, uh, basically the last week, we've had, uh, God, since the beginning of the new year, I think we have on total three new agents and I have a few more that are should be up and running I would say over the next uh, couple months and with that expansion and everything else there's a lot of um, insight hopefully I can give these new agents that will help them and one of the topics we had yesterday at our team training that I thought was very valuable for um, the newer agents is that every action that you take matters and this is something I just want to kind of go over quick and when I talk about every action matters, I'm gonna kind of give you guys some examples of things in my career. And again, this is year 10, um, start of year 10 for me in real estate. And things that I've been doing consistently um, for 10 years and how they might have seemed insignificant at the time, but now or in the past or hopefully going forward, um, they turn into opportunities. So a few, a few cool things that have happened, or I'll give you a few stories. So, um, starting off, I've had, I tell agents to be consistent with their um, follow-up, their prospecting and everything else. Most agents are, the reason most agents don't do well is they're not consistent. They don't take action and they're not consistent. That's two things. Action and consistency will make you a very, very, very top agent in, in any area. Um, I don't, again, we've talked about this before, I don't find that I'm the most skilled. Um, I don't think I came with the best knowledge base or any of this. Um, I work my ass off every day to get better every day and I stay super consistent and I take action every single day. That's why I've been able to accomplish things that I've been able to accomplish. So when I talk to agents about, you know, every action matters, every little action matters, what that can translate to is my follow-up calls. I follow up with clients sometimes for years and I've sold clients homes five years from when I initially talked to them to when they actually bought a home. Um, I had an example the other day, I've been following up with this person for two years, leaving a message every single month for two years and I've only been in contact with this person in a two year time frame three times. Three times they've responded to my call or text. Um, most of those calls that I make go unanswered and most people could look at that and say, ah, don't worry about it. It, it you know, s screw it, it's wasting my time, I don't need to talk to this person. Well, that's not my attitude. I always follow up with the person and trying to see where it goes. And sure enough, two years later, they reached out to me or this person reached out to me and it possibly could lead to and I can't go into detail currently uh, because it is not fully out there but an opportunity that I could look back on in my career as a huge catalyst or, or um, start to something I want to grow into as a, a real estate professional. Um, again, I know that's very vague, but um, trust me when I say that this opportunity, um, not, not even counting the financial um, gain that I could get from this, and that's, like I said, I'm not a very money motivated person. I'm really looking at what this could potentially have as an impact on our area or a start of a relationship that could end up pull or starting one of my, basically my lifetime goal, at least for our area, um, to give back and build this community up um, as much as I can in my lifetime. So I think this is a huge, this could be the huge entry level of that. Now, I know that's vague. I'm, I'm sure I will talk about it at some point later this year on the podcast, but 
to go back in time, this never would have happened had I not followed up, followed up, followed up. The reason is because they mentioned my follow up, they also mentioned my marketing. Um, which brings me to my next topic of marketing and posting and making content. It might seem insignificant. I post a lot. I try to post a lot. I try to post, I wish I could post 10 times what I normally post. It's something I'm working on is how do we increase the content that we put out. I believe that my content, um, and it's not, and again, this happens a lot in my business. I don't compare against other people. Yes, I know my content right now blows most people out of the water in regards to the amount regarding um, the quality and everything else. But I also, my competition, I know this sounds cliche, is myself. If I know that there's inefficiencies or I know that I'm not working as efficient or at my max capacity, there's room for improvement. So I look at what I'm doing. So I look at my 2020 Galen where I want 2021 Galen to be or, or 2022 or 2030 or 2050 Galen to be so I'm very um, I don't have a big ego I'm very humble in the sense that I can knock my own self down a peg and realize you have some stuff broken in your business or in your company or whatever and I have the you know the wherewithal to to recognize that and I also don't have I'm not a super prideful person where I, I can't take my own critique. So again, I'm my own hardest critic. Um, so there's some things that I need to be better at, which is content creation. I'm, and that will be another rant for probably next week or the week after. But when it talks to posting, every post you make, like, I might seem insignificant. That little meme or that picture or that video or that thought might not make a big difference today, but it's the compound effect. Doing this over and over and over and over again, being top of mind in someone's mind, bringing value to people. What happens is, and I use the car analogy, I have no intention of looking for a car for another year and a half. I get flyers in the mail, I get emails. They get deleted, they get thrown out. It's not top of mind for me, it's not something that is a big part of my life that I need to be concerned with right now, but in a year from now, I will start paying attention to those same flyers that were hitting me in the face for the year prior that I was throwing out, mean nothing, will mean something in a year. Real estate's the same thing, it's a process. People don't just click on real estate and typically buy it right off. A lot of them are testing the waters for later in the year or the following year. So just because you're following up with them and, and right now and they're not responding does not mean that they won't do something in a year. It's just you're not top of mind, but by you planting the seed in a year from now when they are ready, guess who they're gonna contact? The person that, the only person that stayed consistent and followed up with them for months and months and months. We had an agent here and they were following up and they sent two emails and then I looked at the data, their database and it was kind of empty and they had the person um, you know, scheduled to be deleted from our database and I asked them, I said, what's, what's going on here? Well, they didn't respond to my emails. I said, how many did you send? Well, I sent two over two months or three over two months and they didn't respond. And I said, well, and I gave them that exact analogy about they're not ready to buy yet, but stay consistent. Um, and basically you're, you're already saying they're no good without them telling you that they're no good. So don't, don't write someone off before they write themselves off. Meaning they tell you they don't want to buy from you or they have no intention of buying. Then you can say, okay, I will not pursue this anymore, but don't say no before they do. Um, so the consistent action of that again is a lot of those little actions lead to future business. Now, um, there's a bunch more. Those are just a couple of recent ones that happened. There's a bunch more that off the top of my head could totally, um, I could probably have really thought about it, could come up with ideas because this happens to me all the time and more and more frequently because now my past work is starting to really, my past efforts are starting to show in my current work. Um, the other thing though is people and every action that you take, again, when things don't seem significant at the time do matter. And I'm going to use my favorite analogy that it had, I think it's had the biggest impact in my life. Uh, I've talked about him before on the show. Uh, one of my best friends now, business mentors, um, you know, co, I don't know, jammer on marketing, uh, Aaron Benner is a huge, huge, huge. Um, I'm just very lucky that uh, he is in my life for many reasons. And I use the example of I met Aaron at a career fair at a local school. What's now? This is how this has played out. I went to this career fair for kids 
and kids are not gonna buy a home from me. But I went to the career fair as a way to give back and help out and, and the, I knew the people um, at the school that were running it and it was more of a, to give back and give them, you know, someone, you know, to help them out basically. They wanted someone from real estate, they asked me, which I felt honored, they could ask a lot of other people and they asked me. Um, so I wanted to, you know, um, take them up on their offer. And so I show up at this career fair and there's a bunch of different business people. So yes, there is a, you know, I can network with other agents, or not agents, but other business people in between uh, the kids, you know, the classes coming through. And one of those people is Aaron Benner. I knew a little bit of him, I didn't really know him, I had never spoken to him in my life. And randomly walked up to him and had a conversation and asked, can we meet? And that was May of 2017. I look at our business, I look at my business career from 2017 to the start of 2020 and it is night and day. I've had more growth in the last two and a half years than I've ever had um, in my business and a lot of other things in my life. And a big reason is I attribute a lot of it to Aaron. That never would have happened had I not gone to this career fair and talked to him. Because we've talked about it and you could say, ah, you could have ran into him the next week or the week after. There was a lot of things time-wise that I think were closing in um, on him that I don't think I would have got the opportunity had I even waited a few more weeks or a month. Um, and he said that very adamantly that he agrees the same. So timing matters um, and actions matter. And from Aaron, I met Hannah and Hannah works at her office. And Hannah happened to be blueberry picking at Rolf's Orchard and, and Aaron, with a friend and Aaron was doing a time wise, just synced up. Aaron was doing a video shoot for Rolf's Orchard and happened to meet Hannah and her friend and asked if they would be willing to be in the video. And then Aaron, of course, the way he is, everybody knows he um, is a quiet person. And uh, no, so he obviously struck up a conversation with the girls and asked them what they were planning on doing after college. And or after uh, planning what they're doing, they said they go to college, what are you planning to do after college? And Hannah said, I want to get into real estate. So Aaron said, contact Galen. And and the funny thing is, prior to that, Hannah had no clue who I was. Hannah had tried, I think, one or two other local real estate offices to try to get in with them and then they both kind of ghosted her. And she happened to run into Aaron and sure enough, by the next day, um, Hannah had reached out to us and we had scheduled a meeting within the week and now she is licensed here. And that all happened a little over a year ago and something like that, Timing matters, running into people matters, but being in position. I met Aaron, now I met Hannah, and from Hannah, I've met other people and I've had other opportunities and I've helped Hannah out and Hannah's helped me out. None of this would have happened had I not gone to a Serenac career fair day. And so again, little things that seem insignificant do matter. Same thing yesterday, we were at a team meeting and I looked at the four people that were sitting at the table, all newer people within the organization. They all reached out to work with me and obviously I had done something in the past that made them want to work with me. And then when you start hearing all their stories, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, that, that's how you wanted to work here. And it's so funny because I look at that as maybe an insignificant moment, but it turns into such a huge moment. It could be the person that you meet. It could be someone randomly that you talk to in a waiting room. It could be someone that you meet at a, you know, a networking event. And all these things, every conversation to me matters, every text, every smile, Every taking the high road matters. I've had clients that I was work, I've been working with, didn't use me, I didn't get mad, again, took the high road. They came back to use me the second time around because they liked the way I handled the first time. And that's just something, again, um, little things matter in life. I think every interaction you have, every conversation, every, um, again, just smile, every handshake, every um, you know, good deed that you do, leaves an impact on a person and builds relationships and builds trust and eventually things open up and I've had some really cool opportunities. I was also in the running for another big project locally that I did not get, I did not get, but I take it as a win because at the time I was 28 years old and I was at the table um, in the conversation, which I thought was incredible because if you would ask me eight years prior, if you would ask me three years prior, that never would have been an option or even two years prior, but again, by doing the right stuff and doing the right things, um, I was given the opportunity to even be in the conversation for that project. And who knows, I'm not giving up on it. That could be something I end up doing in a year or two from now if their first choice doesn't work out. So you always, like to me, all these little things, I'm always playing the long game. I'm, I'm, I'm not very nearsighted or, or 
you know, short term. I'm playing the long game. I plan on being involved in real estate and business and everything. I'm I just at 30. I mean, I'm modern medicine. I expect easily to live past 100, and I am hoping I'm balling out to 100 in regards to just pure, just love of, you know, business and, and real estate and playing the whole game of, of, of business. And I just find it's fascinating and all these little steps, I'm not playing for 21, 22, 23, 2020, um, 122, like things are going to work 2040, 2060, 2080. I mean, these things are realistic time frames when I will be able to take the snowball effect of the little things I'm doing now and seeing them play out. So, um, I know very, like I said, kind of a, my thoughts of the day um, on that. It really got me thinking recently and um, it just how every action matters. So if you guys are not taking action, if you guys aren't uh, creating content, if you guys aren't going to networking events, if you guys aren't meeting people and putting yourself out there and putting your work out there and following something that you're passionate about, all these little actions will play out the way they're supposed to. I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer that don't say what if, you know, make a decision, go down that path and just live with it. That's the decision you made. Don't dwell and say, what did, What if I would have made the other decision or the other choice? You could do that your whole life. I could, my life could be completely different now if I took a million different um, scenarios or if I didn't have, um, you know, you may be stumbling blocks or roadblocks or, or speed bumps along the way, but it's made me um, a person in 2020 that I literally right now think I have, I'm in the best position of my life by far. Um, I've had good moments in the past for sure, but I think all around as a person in my life, in my family, in my business, I am more satisfied now than I ever have. And I know that this is not even going to be even close to comparison to what it is going to be in 10, 15, 30, 50 years. Um, so I'm super excited, but I'm going to continue to take these actions every day, small actions, be again, actions, not, I'm not going to sit there and um, overthink and not do. I'm going to be doing every single day, day in and day out, because I know all these little actions play out in the end. Um, and a lot of small actions lead to big results. Um, so that's my thoughts of the day. Um, next week, um, if anybody has any questions on this, definitely feel free to reach out to me um, on every social platform at Galen Trombley. Um, would love to speak to you about it. If you have questions or if you guys are stuck or in a rut or think that there's something that you need to get out, I would love to help you out um, and hopefully maybe be a catalyst for you to take more action in your life. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, action, action, leads, action leads to results. And, um, you know, a action breeds or uh, activity breeds activity. That's something my dad's always taught me and I, I truly believe that. So take action. Um, next week, I, we should be back with Miss Ellie and hopefully um, maybe some other people that we can get on this. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed episode 48 of Realty Talk with just me, Galen. Oh, office quote of the day. Uh, I'm going to butcher this. So Ellie, if you listen to this, don't, don't critique me. Um, we all know how poor my, my skills are. Um, let me see. I'm going to try to give in, uh, give one from yesterday. Um, oh, I, I don't know the lines. It's not going to be verbatim. Totally fine. Um, it's just, a, uh, it was the dinner party. And I think if anybody's ever, we're, we're totally late. Once it hit season like seven or so, once like Saber came into the picture and Michael left and everybody knows this was kind of like the sad time of the office. It gets better, but there was like, there's a little dip, a little, little lull in this, in the series. But one of the highlights, I think that's an all time great episode is the dinner party when Andrew Bernard throws a dinner party at Shroot Farms. And I watched that last night and it was kind of in the background. I was doing some work. And of course, one of my favorite parts of it is when Jim um, gets Dwight to buy a book about the basically how to run the ultimate garden party. And the name was James Trick Trickington. So I just thought it was funny. Not really a quote, just thought it was funny. Jim Halpert, also known as James Halpert and Trick Trick Trickington, which was good. And then, uh, and then at the very end when he kept walking by and he kept going, James Halpert. That, I don't know. I, again, I'm bad. Ellie's way better at that than me. But I had to do it. Um, okay, episode 48, Realty Talk. See you next week.